into this first presentation on the module Data Journalism on the MA in Data Journalism at Birmingham City University. In this presentation, I'm going to talk about some of the um, core things that you need to know about data journalism, its role in the industry, um, its role in society more generally, and how to see ideas for stories in a quantified society. And I'm going to talk about, in particular, different definitions of data journalism and related terms like robot journalism and how they can help us as data journalists uh, be better in our journalism. So first of all, why um, are we here? Why is data journalism such a, an important part of the industry? Well, part of it is um, because data has taken on such a... Um, big role within the industry itself. In some research, this is from Google, um, it suggests that, that data is used almost as often as quotes in news reporting. That probably says as much about the decline of, of original reporting and interviewing as it does about data, but it emphasises just how central data has become in mainstream journalism, not just data journalism as a specialist role. We've also seen a growth in new projects in the journalism industry and the news industry, such as fact-checking projects, which rely more on data as one of the tools in verifying that what someone has said is factual. And we've seen industry developments as well, like the uh, BBC growing its data journalism coverage and explicitly saying that it wants to um, focus on that in its reporting and analysis. Other organisations like Reach have expanded their data journalism. We've had magazines like The Spectator establish new data teams, um, particularly recently local news organisations starting up new data teams as well. And part of the reason for that is that data journalism has made the headlines repeatedly in the last decade or so. At the start of the last decade in the UK, we had the MPs expenses scandal and the WikiLeaks war logs for Afghanistan and Iraq, um, both of which dominated the headlines and both of which relied on data journalism skills. Since then, we've seen a series of mega leaks stories like um, the uh, Panama Papers and the offshore leaks stories, which have dominated headlines worldwide. And it's not just for uh, major stories, but more generally, news organisations often find that some of their most read and most popular and most shared stories are data driven or interactive. At the LA Times, for example, a third of the 30 most viewed stories in 2017 were apps or designs by a newsroom developer. Um, the FT's coronavirus tracker is one of its most read stories of all time, and the Washington Post's coronavirus simulator is its most read story ever as well. So uh, editorially and commercially, we've seen data journalism have a massive impact. And Outside of just editorial, we've also seen news organisations decide that they need to invest more and more in data um, skills. So this research from 2017, which shows that news organisations plan to invest most in data, more in data than anything else, that incorporates things like audience analysis, uh, analytics. So outside of editorial, there's also lots of opportunities in the industry for anyone with data analysis skills. And this isn't just in the UK either. We've seen data journalism expand into places like South Africa. We've got France here. We've got India. Um, this is a global practice. And in a number of uh, countries where there's less access to data than in the UK, this has led to opening up of data, some really quite terrific reporting that has changed and set the news agenda. And it's also not just it online and in print. Uh, TV has also used data journalism practices. There are some examples here that you can watch in the, um, in the slides. And radio and podcasting as well. You can find data journalism used in those stories. And we'll talk about how data journalism can be uh, done on those different platforms throughout the course. So let's move on now to this um, term of data journalism 
and some of the concepts that we're dealing with and what that means for us as data journalists. One of the um, recent definitions I've seen, um, which I want to draw your attention to, is uh, from Ala Rabina from a, a data journalism conference a couple of years ago. And she um, talks about a, a data journalism artifact as being likely but not necessarily a web-based journalistic piece. So we've got this focus on platform. It's quite often web-based, partly because of a potential for interactivity. It's based on data collection and analysis. And um, uh, uh, there's this interesting definition that it, it cannot be done without data. But the, the really key part of this quote is this idea that the main data journalistic approach is quantification. And that's what I want to draw your attention to here. Um, data journalism is pretty much always about some form of quantification and that doesn't mean necessarily spreadsheets. So um, this example, this is a, an interactive about 27 years of hip-hop. This isn't a journalist looking at a spreadsheet. There is no government spreadsheet of hip-hop um, music performance or success. Um, this is a journalist looking at the charts and seeing that as, as quantification. It's something that will allow me to create something interactive out of this information, um, something that people can uh, interact with and explore as a, as a form of storytelling. Likewise, this story from The Pudding about gender and uh, film script direction. This is taking film scripts and treating it as quantified information. We have words, we have um, keywords like he or she, and we can quantify how often different directions come after those. So in this particular analysis, we see that um, in film direction, snuggles is the most common direction given to female characters, um, whereas male characters are most often directed to strap or gallop or shoot, or howl, and so on. Again, this doesn't come from a spreadsheet. This comes from looking at digitized information as something that can be quantified. And a, a third example coming from the BBC, this is a, a regular annual project around um, football and the price of following a particular club. Again, in this case, there is no existing spreadsheet. The journalist has decided that it is possible to quantify um, the price of football in terms of things like how much your club's football strip costs, how much a season ticket costs, how much a pie at the stadium costs. So again, this process of quantification as a way of finding and telling a story. Moving on to the second quote about data journalism, this is much more straightforward. The Bureau of Investigative Journalism um, said in their explainer about data journalism. It's simply a way of describing journalism in the modern world. Now, this is a, a simple description, but the important thing here is about this idea of the modern world. The modern world is a digitized world. It is a quantified world. And as soon as our lives and our culture and our business started to move online, it started to become digitized and therefore quantified. It turned into zeros and ones. So journalism started to reflect that. It started to um, report on that modern digitized world, that virtual world that so much of our um, interactions take place across. So that's one of the reasons why data journalism is so important. We need to be able to report on this digitized world that we live in. So the Guardian series, Reading the Riots, for example, about the 2011 riots, um, is again a process of quantification. It's a process of looking at um, these riots and how we can, we can establish um, the, the factual basis for different claims um, and what information is held about it. Not all of this being data-driven, of course. There are uh, interview-driven features here. There are event-driven articles as well. But overall, this was a data-driven project. This story about London Fashion Week, again, London Fashion Week, 
50 years ago or 20 years ago would have been entirely analog but it's now digitized enough in the modern world that we can report on it from a data perspective. Uh, we can use data to tell stories in innovative ways. This is a, a really interesting way of talking about endangered species by simply uh, creating a picture that uses a number of pixels um, that is the same as the number of, of uh, actual animals in existence. And this uh, quirky feature about vocal range looks at sheet music, which has now been digitized. So again, in the modern world, we are able to quantify that and tell a story about it. I now then want to move on to a, a related term in data journalism, which is uh, the, the phrase computational journalism. And you might come across this in some of the literature around data journalism. So I want to spend a bit of time talking about that. And, and in particular, because this is a term which has changed in meaning quite a lot over the years and also is quite problematic in a number of ways compared to the phrase data journalism. So in 2009, Hamilton and Turner defined computational journalism in a very similar way to how you might define data journalism. In fact, at this point, the phrase data journalism hadn't yet become popularised. So this was an alternative term being considered for the same practice at the time. Um, and you can see that, that this is, as I say, very similar to the definitions of data journalism. But the one thing I want to draw attention to here is the idea of the accountability function of journalism. Um, so what we're saying here is that something can only be computational journalism if it's performing an accountability function. By this definition, we can't include the vocal range story. Um, we can't include London Fashion Week. That's not necessarily holding power to account. So I, I think that's that's a problem with this definition. It's, it's too exclusive. It's perhaps too normative. It's uh, normative meaning it's kind of idealized. A year later, Nicholas Diakopoulos, who's probably one of the the best researchers to read when it comes to data journalism and, and algorithmic uh, accountability in data journalism in particular. He defined computational journalism as the application of computing to the activities of journalism. Um, again, very similar to data journalism, but what's key here is the idea of upholding values of journalism, such as balance, accuracy, and objectivity. Now, this is much more useful as a definition because what we're starting to do is define data journalism as a process separate to data analysis um, and data art, things that are not within the value system of journalism. And I'll come back to this later, but again, I want to just draw your attention to this. At this point, it's still basically just another way of describing data journalism. What's happened since, however, is that um, the automated side of journalism has developed so much that computational journalism has come to describe that. And this slide isn't as, as clear as I would like, but this was a photo taken at a conference of a, quite a useful diagram that starts to pick apart the different parts of what computational journalism has now started to refer to. So when people talk about computational journalism now, often what they're talking about are different branches of automated journalism. So this isn't necessarily data journalism in the sense of um, investigative journalism or um, news features and analysis. This is more about using computational processes to automate different parts of journalism. And that might be automating distribution. So... Um, what goes out when. It might be the composition and presentation of stories, so automatically generated charts or text summaries. It might be automated gathering and evaluation of information, so monitoring social media for potentially newsworthy events, things like that. So this, this is where computational journalism as a term has kind of found a home. Originally, it was competing with data journalism as a term to describe data-driven storytelling. But what computational journalism has become is a term for the automated branch of data journalism, so a subset of data journalism.
And Chris Anderson, um, in 2018, in his book, Apostles of Certainty, came up with the best typology I've seen for, for making this distinction between data journalism, computational journalism, and other journalism. What Chris Anderson says is that uh, most journalism is what's, what he would describe as a journalism of occurrences. So this is journalism which focuses on events, um, things happening, people saying things, um, basically what's happening. And, and that's been, that's dominated journalism for a century or more. Um, the second type of journalism that he identifies is the journalism of social science. So this is more putting news into context. This is um, going back to uh, computer-assisted reporting, which is a precursor to data journalism, going back to the 1960s in the US. So this is where we, we can start to use data to add that extra context um, to analyze in more depth. The third branch, Chris Anderson argues, is where those two first branches are combined. So we're starting to use um, social science technologies, if you like, uh, computational processes, to look at events, look at occurrences, look at regularity. So instead of the big investigative one-off features, computational journalism is about computing events. So it might be every time that an organization releases an annual report, an algorithm that we have written as a data journalist looks at that report and summarizes it. So it picks out the key points in that report. It might perform calculations to tell a story about whether things have gone up and or down, you know, profits are up, revenue is down, things like that. It might be monitoring weather stations and triggered when a certain event occurs, so an earthquake above a particular threshold. It might be um, taking in a feed on uh, sports events and again generating text for what um, happened at that event. This team scored more than that, so I'm going to use this particular template. It might be analysing images and telling us whether they've been manipulated or not. It could be any number of things where it's, it, we've, we've essentially written a script to perform part of the action of journalism, but in a routine way as part of that journalism of occurrences rather than a more in-depth, special way as in the journalism of social science. Now the skills of computational journalism are still that same skill set as in data journalism. Uh, what you're doing essentially is anticipating events and writing scripts to deal with those and, and help you as a journalist or help the audience access information that they wouldn't otherwise be able to access. And part of that is robot journalism. So robot journalism is a term that refers to um, an automated process writing an algorithm, a script, that converts data into a narrative news text. In this particular definition, the first one from Matt Carlson, it specifies that there is limited to no human intervention beyond the initial programming. Now, the initial programming is important. This is not a robot in the sense that it is independent. We have told it what to do. It carries out our actions. And in this sense, I would argue that the algorithm is a tool in the same way that a pen or a typewriter is. We, as a journalist, are using that tool to tell stories. We create the robot and it performs as well or as badly as we have designed it to perform. And we can check it, and often these are subject to checks and balances. But that's what robot journalism is about. Now, in contrast, augmented journalism is a form of automated journalism where there is some human intervention. In fact, human action is very much part of the process. What we have here is an algorithm or some sort of automation um, performing some of the effort of our journalistic process, but ultimately we pick that work up and then we finish work with it. So an example would be um, automated video editing. 
auto automated video editing systems will take a script, they will find images and footage and edit it together for a package, but uh, that is then presented to us as a journalist to put the finishing touches to that. So we might change some of the footage, we might uh, remove some of the edits, we might add some different voiceover or there might not be any voiceover at all. But ultimately, it's not robot journalism, it's augmented. We, we're working with the algorithm um, in order to produce a piece of journalism. And that might involve artificial intelligence, like monitoring certain sources and alerting us to things. So I, I, having um, taken that tour around some of the different concepts related to data journalism and some of the different definitions, I want to arrive at two final definitions that I hope will inform your work on the course. And the first is, is this definition that I came up with for the data journalism handbook. Um, which I will, I will read out and then just explain. So in that, uh, in the introduction to the data journalism handbook, I said that data can be the source of data journalism or it can be the tool with which the story is told. So first of all, there's, there's a distinction here between data in terms of news gathering, the source of the story, and in terms of news production, the, the way that we tell the story. So in other words, Data journalism might simply be interactivity. And as you go through the course, you will uh, be making choices about whether you want to focus your efforts on news gathering and using developing skills there, or in terms of news production, the front end of interactivity and visualization. And as I say here, it can be both, and you will probably be doing both, but you will probably have to start focusing on one or the other. Uh, importantly, whichever it is, like any source, you should treat that source with scepticism. You should be checking the data um, rather than treating it as fact. And like any tool, you should be conscious of how it can shape and restrict the stories that are created with it. When we choose a particular chart or a particular form of interactivity, that affects what we can and cannot say and how it is received. And then the second quote, this is a much drier of a second definition, uh, this is a much drier definition, but I, I wanted to write this alternative because I wanted to draw attention to the different dimensions of data journalism. So first of all, we've got the ability to generate newsworthy store ideas for a particular audience. That newsworthiness is what makes it journalism as well, um, and we'll talk about newsworthiness in, a, in another um presentation. We have to consider an audience. That's also what makes it journalistic rather than just a personal project or a piece of art or analysis. We have to think of the audience. What do they know? What do they need to know? In order to do that, we need to obtain, clean, contextualize and analyze relevant data. So there are a number of, of processes involved. And again, you might focus more on some of those skills than others. And finally, we communicate that story effectively, ethically, and accurately. This comes back to those ideas of journalistic values. And again, it's something that distinguishes data journalism from other forms of data-driven storytelling. We need to think about the ethics of journalism and, and journalistic norms, such as accuracy, impartiality, objectivity, and um, considering the audience, giving a voice to the voiceless, and so on. So having mapped those definitions, again, I want you to think about some of these ideas as you work on your projects, and particularly um, these are things that you should be considering in your evaluations and, and your wider reading around data journalism practice. How am I considering the audience? How am I considering what makes something newsworthy? How am I considering the ethics of the data journalism process? Effective communication and effective analysis, cleaning and contextualization and so on. So just to sum up um, from that presentation, first of all, we have a lot of things going on in data journalism. And it's worth saying very early on that, that very few people can do them all and pretty much no one 
can do them from the start or at least within 12 months. So you shouldn't be expecting yourself to be a master of every dimension of data journalism. Focus on the areas that interest you, the areas that you want to work in professionally, whether that's front-end visualization and interactivity or more back-end data gathering, cleaning, analysis, and so on. Secondly, um, look for ideas for stories in anything that's quantifiable. Don't just look for spreadsheets. Look at the world around you and how it's digitized, how it's quantified, how it can be quantified, and use that to inform your ideas. And finally, be critical. Um, there are a lot of concepts that we've explored here that have started to introduce some of those questions about what our uh, processes, how they affect what we do and the stories that our audiences receive. Um, and this isn't just limited to data journalism. Obviously, the shape of a newsroom, the shape of an industry has a big impact on the stories that get told and whose voices get heard. So think about automation, augmentation, quantification, how those shape the stories that we can tell, how we can tell them and who we can tell them to. So, having done all of that, um, having covered all of that, I want you to do something before you move on to the next presentation, and that is to fork, in other words, clone, the uh, repository for this module. You'll find instructions at that link. Um, you'll also you'll find instructions on Moodle, and um, it should be a very straightforward process. You just need to set up an account on GitHub, GitHub.com. Then go to this, um, go to this repo for the data journalism module and make a copy of it by clicking on the button to fork it. There are instructions on there, and I will see you in the next presentation.